In this video, we're going to take a look at a reaction called the Robinson annulation that combines the Michael reaction with algol condensation. The basic idea of the Robinson annulation is that it's an annulation, first of all, it's, it's a cycloaddition, really, a, a stepwise cycloaddition reaction such that the Michael acceptor acts as a nucleophile in the ensuing aldol condensation. And the Michael acceptor is set up so that it has an electrophilic carbon at what we might call carbon one, and the potential to form an enolate at carbon four. So it's an electrophile on one end and a nucleophile on the other. Meanwhile, the Michael donor is a nucleophile at the doubly alpha carbon, but an electrophile at the actual carbonyl carbon. So it too has a nucleophile and electrophile embedded in it, kind of in a one, two pattern. So the net result is a four plus two cycloaddition actually, but a stepwise cycloaddition where one bond is formed through Michael addition and the second bond really bonds because we're gonna see a double bond forms are formed through uh, aldol condensation. All right. Let's dig into this. So the basic idea here is that after a Michael addition, well, Michael addition generates an enolate. And if that enolate or an isomeric enolate of the Michael acceptor can add back to the original Michael donor in an aldol condensation, we can get what's called the Robinson annulation. And before we dig into the mechanism, I think it's helpful here to break down the reactants and products and see where the atoms of the reactants end up in the products. So I've gone ahead and numbered the atoms of the reactants. Here's our Michael donor. Notice we've got two carbonyls in a 1,3 dicarbonyl pattern. Carbon two is gonna be our nucleophile. And here is our Michael acceptor. And carbon four is the beta carbon as we've numbered them here. And so that's going to be the carbon that actually accepts electrons from carbon two. So in the product of Michael addition, there's a new bond between carbon two and carbon four and we end up with an extra hydrogen linked to carbon five, right? Um, this is the net result after one four or conjugate addition followed by either tautomerization or protonation at carbon five. And notice that now we've got the classic one five dicarbonyl product of Michael addition, but there's a methyl group hanging off of the Michael acceptor. And that methyl group is well positioned for an aldol condensation with carbon three. For example, imagine this was a nucleophile and carbon three was an electrophile. This would create a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring. Nice. So in the ensuing aldol condensation, new bonds are formed between carbon seven and carbon three, ultimately a double bond because a molecule of water is lost in this process as well. And the net result overall you'll see is the addition of carbons two and three and four and seven. So this is a kind of four plus two cycloaddition, but one occurring in a stepwise manner rather than concerted as, as we saw in the diels alder reaction. It's also really cool in that one of the new bonds formed is actually a double bond. We get two bonds between carbons three and seven. All right, let's dig into the mechanism in a, in a little more detail. First of all, let's start with the aldol condensation and recognize that carbon seven can form an enolate. That enolate can add here and this will result in aldol addition to give an alkoxide like this. That alkoxide can be protonated, for example, by water. We're using something like sodium hydroxide base and heat to drive the condensation. Water will be around. This gives this beta hydroxy ketone right here and the loss of water from that is what gives rise to the final product. I won't go through the Michael mechanism in detail. You can refer back to the Michael reaction video for that. It's the exact Michael addition mechanism that we've previously seen with generation of a stabilized enolate nucleophilic addition N followed by proton transfers to give the neutral Michael product. Where the Robinson annulation really gets tricky is in applying it in synthesis and retrosynthesis since it generates a lot of structural complexity in the forward direction going from acyclic starting materials to cyclic products. Working this reaction backwards is a little bit tricky, but to do this, to apply the Robinson annulation reaction in retrosynthesis, we wanna look for a general structure that looks something like this. With a six-membered ring, a cyclohexenone like this, there needs to be a, a C double bond O inside the ring in conjugation with the CC double bond, and we need a carbonyl group specifically at this position, which we can think of as the alpha, beta, gamma, carbon with respect to the carbonyl group inside the ring. Now let's unpack this a little bit and see how this corresponds to a product 
of a Robin simulation. So in reverse, let's think about the aldol condensation first. And the retro aldol condensation is really what we want to think through here, working backwards from the product to the starting material. We can notice, for example, that there's an alpha beta unsaturated ketone built into this structure. It's highlighted in blue here. And if we add water to that and then undo, add water at the beta carbon, carbon three as we've labeled it here, and then undo the aldol addition, we get back to a carbonyl group at carbon three, specifically an aldehyde, and a methyl group at carbon four. Imagine in the forward direction an enolate forming here, adding in, kicking up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That would lead ultimately to aldol condensation. And now we can notice that we have now one, two, three, four, five, one, five dicarbonyl structure in the starting material, quote unquote, for the aldol condensation. So this can be worked backwards to a Michael donor and a Michael acceptor. And we can see, for example, that we have a one, three dicarbonyl structure built into what I'm circling in red here. And we've got the potential for this set of carbons to be part of an alpha beta unsaturated ketone in this case. And this allows us to work back to these structures. Here's our Michael donor, right? We can form a stabilized enolate there at carbon two. And our Michael acceptor right here with a double bond between carbon seven and six. I encourage you at this point to actually pause the video and make sure you understand how each of the numbered carbons translates into the subsequent structure in the retrosynthesis, because you're going to want to be able to work backwards from a Robinson annulation product all the way back to these starting materials of the reaction. Now we noted this on the previous slide, but I want to look at it in a little more detail to help us better understand what the Robinson annulation does. This is a formal four plus two cycloaddition. It's a cycloaddition reaction that is four plus two that occurs stepwise rather than in a concerted manner like the diels alder reaction. And if we think about the nucleophile and electrophile in the Michael and Aldol processes, it becomes apparent why this is the case. The new bonds formed here are associated with the gray dotted lines. We actually get two bonds formed, a double bond here and a single bond here. And the top bond comes from a Michael addition, a Michael addition of this carbon, which can form a stabilized enolate to this electrophilic carbon. So our Michael nucleophile is this doubly alpha carbon right here. Michael electrophile is the beta carbon of the alpha beta unsaturated ketone built into that reactant on the left. At the bottom, in the aldol process, the reactants switch roles. The left molecule is the aldol nucleophile via an enolate that forms right there, and the right-hand molecule is the aldol electrophile via its carbonyl group right there. So we see how the, the substrate structures, the reactant structures are sort of complementary. This has positive charge here and ultimately negative charge there, while the other reactant has positive charge here and negative charge there. And these complementary charges enable two bond formations in a single reaction mixture. Really remarkable transformation that leads to a lot of complexity in a single reaction flask from relatively simple acyclic starting materials. Here we're looking at what that reaction would look like in the forward direction, and I just wanted to show this as, for example, what you would draw if you were applying the Robinson annulation in the forward direction. Would need the carbon numbering, of course, that's not necessary, but we would need base. Base is necessary to generate the enolate intermediates involved in this reaction, and heating is typically used to ensure that we get all the way to the condensation product. So we can see, for example, the original Michael donor built into carbons one, two, and three, and the original Michael acceptor built into carbons four through seven in this product. And this methyl group is pretty much just along for the ride with carbon two throughout the mechanism. 